In an earlier video, we showed how to set up an assignment, write the instructions for the students, and to publish it on your course website with an announcement. Now we are going to take it a small step further and make the entire submission process and grading process paperless and electronic. As before, click on Upload Create at the location where you want your new assignment. Give it a title and some instructions, and when you are ready, click Publish. You've seen this before in the prior video. Now add an attachment to the students, if needed, that gives more detailed information on what they need to do in their assignments. Now comes the difference. We would like the students to submit electronically. Click down here on Add Dates and Restrictions. Fill in a start date, this is when the assignment becomes available to students, and a due date, which is the last date and time at which they can submit. Please do not set an end date. After the end date and time, the link is not clickable for students anymore. This prevents them from returning here to see the assignment, which they might need to prepare later for exams or simply to review. Students can still submit after the due date, but instructors and teaching assistants will clearly see this assignment marked as being late. Assignments submitted before the due date are regular assignments submitted on time. Let's discuss the options for electronic file submission. Use the unlimited option when students can submit either one or multiple files. Or you could use the option where they submit a single file. Either option can be useful. Use the unlimited option if students are expected, for example, to submit two or more documents, but please make sure your students are aware of a pitfall, which we will describe just a little bit further on. Take a look at the submission options. The first option means that when students submit and then come back and resubmit, and then come back a third time and resubmit, that all those submissions are kept. This could lead to confusion on your side as the teaching assistant or teacher when you are grading. The second option, and this might be the recommended one, is to only keep the most recent submission from the student. Since students might submit drafts or incomplete work, this gives them the chance to resubmit multiple times. These submissions are not shown to you or your TAs. This minimizes the potential confusion of grading earlier drafts that were not meant to be graded. And then the last option, and this is the most restrictive, gives students a single opportunity to upload their submission. We recommend that you choose the middle one, as this minimizes the amount of email that you might receive when students want to resubmit. A pitfall exists when allowing multiple documents and keeping the most recent submission. That combination is a problem when students work in groups and, for example, student 1 submits document 1, student 2 comes and submits document 2 because they've divided the work. Now, unfortunately, only that second document submitted by the second student is kept and document 1 submitted by the first student is not. In this situation, please inform your student groups that when they resubmit work when they've divided it up, that the last person to submit should always submit all the documents. Remember to click Update once you have finished your settings here. The last few settings are related to joining the assignment back to the Brightspace gradebook. If you don't need this, you can end the video here and your assignment is set up and ready to go. However, if you do want to connect to the gradebook, please create the grade item in the gradebook ahead of time. If you have done so, you will be able to select the gradebook column, or item as it is called, from this drop-down menu. Lastly, don't forget to enter the number of points for the assignment. You might have to repeat the same value that you used in your gradebook setup. For example, if your gradebook column is for 20 points for this assignment, please re-enter that value of 20 here again. We will use it in the grading process. So those are all the steps required to set up an electronic submission folder where all the submissions will be kept. We will show in a coming video how you will now use this assignment submission folder and do the electronic grading between yourself and your teaching assistants.